Further GCSE mathematics, six mark question, non-calc, isn't it? It says the nth term of a sequence is that, where a and b are integers, the second term is a third, the limiting value of the sequence as n tends to infinity is a quarter, find the values of a and b. All right, this one was sent to me by one of the Lung Gang, uh, they DM me on Reddit, isn't it? But guys, on my Reddit, just post on the main feed, isn't it? It's better that way, because then we can discuss it as well. All right, so limiting sequences. Now, the better way to write this stuff is un. This is the formal way of writing things. Is an squared plus 5 over bn squared plus a. So the second term is a third. Second term meaning n is 2. All right? So... We have, I just looked down by the way, I thought I didn't have my mic on. So I had u2, that's what we'd write down when n is 2. So we say u2 is a times 2 squared plus 5 divided by b times 2 squared plus a. How does that simplify? That's 4a, so 4a plus 5 divided by 4b plus a. And we're equating that to a third. Now, this already is giving me simultaneous equations vibes. Okay, because we have one equation with a and b in it, and it equals a number. We're going to need another equation, and we're going to solve simultaneously. So, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cross multiply. So, we have 4a plus 5 times 3. I'm going to get 12a. So, I get 12a plus 5 times 3 is 15, is then multiplying through there, 4b plus a. Now, um, I think what I'm going to do, I want to keep that 15 positive. I'm actually going to move the 12a. So I get 15 is 4b a minus 12a is minus 11a. Okay, there is my first equation. Okay, now we need to discuss this limiting value. Okay, so this is the first part. What's going on in this second part? As n tends to infinity... Now we need to think, what happens to this fraction as n becomes huge? Well, it's actually very, very simple. Now, some of you might have been told to divide through by n squared on the top and the bottom, and then you say the fraction tends to zero and all that stuff. I mean, you don't have to say that. It's a little bit easier than that to think about. So let me just give you guys a really easy example to think about. So say I gave you x plus 1 divided by x plus 2. This is a recip graph. Yeah, it's very easy to draw. But let's just imagine x tends to infinity. So x is a huge number. Think of it as like a, a billion, okay? A billion plus one divided by a billion plus two, okay? Now, another way you can think of it before I tell you what, what mathematically is going on is say you won the lottery. Yeah, I like using lottery examples. I think I used one in the GCSE video yesterday. Um, and I said, look, if you win the lottery, say you win a billion pounds, yeah, and then you drive home, you live in London, but then you had to go all the way up to Edinburgh to get your winnings, okay, so you won a billion, you had to drive all the way from London to Edinburgh, and you drove all the way back with your billion, and then the shopkeeper up in Edinburgh called you and said, yo, I owe you a pound, mate. You actually won a billion and one pound. What would you tell him? Would you drive all the way up back to Edinburgh? Or would you say, keep the pound? Now, I for sure would drive all the way back up and get my pound. But most people would say, allow it, yeah? <laughs> so, when x becomes sufficiently large, these constants... You just cannot be bothered. They do not affect the value of the calculation. Okay, that ratio does not really change because that plus one is so small compared to your billion. Same with the plus two compared to the billion. Okay, so as X becomes infinitely large, guys, even if that said a million, if you have an infinite amount of money, even a million makes no difference to you. Yeah, I think uh, uh, Bill Gates and that, all right? By the time they've gone down to pick up their shoe, they have made back a million, okay? 
So, as n, or as x tends to infinity, these cancel out, you're left with 1. Okay? The same concept applies here. All right? So obviously, I've done a lot of explaining here, but in terms of the maths, guys, it is super simple. Okay? As n tends to infinity, which part of this becomes insignificant? The 5 and the a. Because n squared, if n is a billion, when you square that, that's very significant. Yeah? In fact, these n squareds maintain those same proportions. So as n tends to infinity, this un tends to a n squared divided by b n squared. And those cancel out. We're left with a over b. Okay? Now they said that is a quarter. Sweet. So when we cross multiply, we get b is 4a. Nice. And now we solve. So we're going to plug that in there. So we get 15 is 4b. So b is 4a. When you times that by 4, we get 16a uh, minus 11a. So we get 15 is 16 minus 11 is 5a. So a is 3. If a is 3, b is 4 times that, 12. And that is that. Okay, so guys, for six marks, this is a really chill question. Uh, just think about the lottery example, driving up to Edinburgh and all that stuff. And guys, if you have an extra question or more questions for GCSE for the maths that you are attempting and you want me to have a go or discuss with other mathematicians, head to the Lungang Reddit. Link is in the description. Like the video. If you learned something new today, you probably did. Uh, and subscribe for more content like this. And yeah, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Nice.